They call him Rhino. And it's because he crushes through his opponents. And he's got a big obstacle in front of him that just broke dry. You know, that is something that Sam has had on his side. He's got an early start against almost all of his opponents. And you get the sense he's going to need that. I think Chris can quite believe that six ball didn't work its way into that top right corner pocket, but yeah. alas, it hasn't. So first chance in this semi-final will go to Sam Henderson, all 17 years of him. Biggest issue he's going to have if he makes the final, of course, is it may well be past his bedtime, but I'm sure we can... Uh -oh. I'm sure we can cross that hurdle when we come to it. Well, he's definitely no <laughs> uh, beginner at the tournament scene. Uh, multiple accolades on his belt, and I'm sure he's seen a few 4 a.m. finishes <laughs> in his life. I'm only playing, of course. He's <laughs> he's a super talent. He, I've been a bit, there's, a, there's a few players that I've watched properly for the first time today and been so so impressed by. Ricky Evans was one of them. Fell to Jordan Shepard in the semi. A few minutes ago and I mean for 17 Sam Anderson is terrifying honestly it, it's, it's not just how good he is it's the, it's the way he is and he I mean he looks like a star you know there's something to be said about the the juniors in in the USA and I don't think they get any of the credit um, while we were on break a couple hours ago um, Sophia Mast, who is in here for uh, both the ladies and the juniors, she was in the arena doing some stuff with Sam, working together, uh, d just shooting some uh, some content stuff, and uh, yeah, some fun and games sort of thing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And she is she's exactly the same. She is so respectful and so appreciative of just being here. Uh, it, it it really goes to show you that. The juniors and whoever is raising them is teaching them to just be respectful, and I love it. I absolutely love it because the juniors are the future. These juniors are the guys that are going to be guys and girls that are going to be winning tournaments in the next uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty years. These are the next Chris Mellings and Shane Thompson. So I'm super excited to watch all of these players play. It's very, very phenomenal. Well, Sam has run into a bit of a problem. He actually found a really nice line to land on this one ball, but he's maybe four inches too far in terms of pace. Can he get this moving towards a pocket? Oh, foul's been called there. So he pushed through the ball, and he was just simply trying to push the one ball to the 11, make it a little tougher on Chris. And I'm not going to say he hasn't achieved it, but uh, Chris's experience is going to take him a long ways in this situation. <laughs> Came to the table with the wrong cue there. Has a little <laughs> laugh about it. Happens to the best of us, Chris. Oh. oh I, the creativity of, of that shot there was incredible. But it's not come out perfectly for him. And Chris Melling still has a bit of work to do. shot this is well, <laughs> he's said, a bit special isn't he I said he was going to get another opportunity I didn't really see that being the uh, the shot that he uses it but hey it's Chris Milling he's going to find a way they don't call him the magician for nothing he's really hit this very well just needs to roll up Yeah, I feel like he's coming into his stride a little bit. Oh, oof. just as I say that, he's he's okay. <laughs> Could have overrolled that very easily. Yeah, Chris has been on a little bit of a, a streak lately. He went very, very far in uh, uh, the World Championships just a couple weeks ago. Obviously, he won the Masters a couple days ago. I think the sense that I get from him is he he thinks since... 
his heyday was generally considered around the time that he won his two world titles, around about the early 2000s. And he thinks he potted a ball better then than he does now. I'm not but, sure about that. <laughs> but he, well, it, it's all relative, of course. But but he says the experience he has now and the way he sees the game now, he feels he doesn't need to rely as much on that. And he feels like he's a completely better player than he was back then. He, the, we, right now we're seeing the best version of Chris Melling is what Chris Melling thinks. That's well, a scary and, thought. And I, yeah, and I can't really fight with that. I'd like to take credit for the Louisiana Open kicking off a, a winning streak for Chris because he was able to snap off the inaugural event over there, won the open event, and then just went on a tear through Europe winning all kinds of stuff. Again, super high finish in the world championships. Uh, the Masters event, I mean, he literally got off the plane a couple days ago. He had been on the plane for 20, 30, however many hours. No keyboards in here. Uh, oh, no. That's brutal. That's unfortunate. This is going to test young Sam. He's going to test that mentality that we've praised so often today. Because he's had a couple of moments of real misfortune. And we're talking real small margins. In the first frame, he's overrun a shot by a few inches. It's killed his chances of winning the frame. Should have been 1-0 up. In the second frame, he's had a pretty unlucky nudge off a cannon. He's gone in off. He's going to find himself 2-0 down here. And the important thing for young Sam is how he responds to it. Can he keep that composure that you spoke so highly of earlier on? Well, I'd like to think that he can, but you're right. This is going to test him as far as that composure goes. He's got to hold it together. And I, I think he will. I really do. Whether or not he is able to mount a comeback, uh, I, I would just like to see the young gun hold his own for the rest of this match. I know the fans out there want to see him make a, make a big comeback against Chris. So um, Chris has been playing nonstop, I'm sure, and, and on top of that other event. Oh, oh no. <laughs> what is going on? How do you like that? I mean, even Chris is having a giggle at that one. That's that's an amazing. Just watch the cue ball. All you have to do is watch the cue ball here. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six kisses. Oh, no. He had the cue ball safe in the middle of the right side cushion, and it's been kicked all the way to the top left corner pocket. How ridiculous is that? Well, Sam Henderson, for the third time in the match, has first visit. And we talked about this earlier with in the semi-final with, with Jordan and Ricky. The difference here for Sam between 2-1 down and the next break and 3-0 down is enormous. It's a huge swing frame, this. These have got to go for Sam. And this, I really hope he gets them. It will settle him down and we, I feel then we'll get a real semi-final. Well, and we're, no matter who plays him, we are on a fast track to Jordan Shepard and somebody. And, and and I believe that will be a very competitive match. Uh, whoever, yeah, whoever wins this. No matter who great. wins this, it, it'll be very competitive. I don't see a run over happening unless we, we hear what you talked about before about Jordan Shepard just going absolutely. It's what we would call being in dead stroke. Well, the thing is, is... <laughs> Chris and Jordan are both capable of doing that to each other. They have done in the past. They get along very well off the table. And they're very quite similar players on it. And they've had plenty of run-ins in the past. And they've they've both done that to each other. They've both beaten each other 7-0 in competitions. Because <laughs> they can just get, for as, as good as one player is, the, the, if the other one doesn't get the chances, they'll just get run through. And... We've got an issue here for Sam Henderson. This three ball doesn't go, and he's not on the six. I think the three ball cheats. I think you can cheat the three ball in. He does not, though. Oh, does he? He's going to play safe. Oh, he's oh, going to play the combo. the combo. That's a fantastic shot. Well played. And he's got the shot on the four ball. He can take the route in, take the route out, in between the eight and the ten, and he'll be dead perfect. 
absolutely perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, it rolled a little more than I thought it would. Yeah, it's just a couple of moments like that where Sam's just not quite fully had the pace to say. Well, that was the lovely combo that he played. You could see there it was completely offset. Played a really, really good stroke. The good news here, I, I think he runs into the 15, so if he plays it nice and smooth. Oh. oh. Well, he ripped it. Can you believe the reaction he got on the cue ball there? And this is another tough angle here because the cue ball is going to be moving towards the corner pocket. He's going to have to rip this one again and yank it back across that side rail. Key to this, not playing it too hard, and that's exactly what he did. Let the spin take. Oh, hats well, off to, to him right there. That was a great out in a situation where he had really almost messed up big time for the third time. I, I gave myself a go. Bettendorf, Iowa. Um, I know for a fact that he has a, uh, a huge fan base in Illinois. Um, there's actually a, a very nice pool hall up there that uh, he's played out of multiple times. Um, those guys really, really like Sam. They've been around him a lot. They've seen him grow as a player. So I know there's a lot of people all around watching this. And I could probably name off 10 by hand that I know are watching Sam Henderson right now try to beat Chris Melling. And he, he's, he's got a good start here. Could have been better, but full frame in the work. Full frame in the row. Is that first visit? He couldn't have wished for a better start in terms of opportunity. He, he could and should be 3 0 up. But, you know, let's not be too hard on him. Had a couple of bad moments of of bad luck, but what I've been so impressed by all day long is Sam's mentality, his fortitude, his composure. So right now he's not going to be thinking, oh, I should be 3 0 up. He's thinking, I've got a chance to go 2 2. And these players, I was trying to think to myself if they had ever played before, if they'd ever been matched up. It just dawned on me that they are both on. Uh, the same team. They are on Team QTech. So, uh, probably been around each other a little bit, but maybe not ever played. I don't think they have, just from what Sam told me in his interview about just how excited he was to play Chris Manning. I, I, I suspect they haven't played before. He's got a shot to play here. Just having a little look at the at the table here. I, the one looks really tight. Really tight. Having a good look at it to the bottom left corner. This is super Tough close. Shot. He's digging this. Oh, he's cut it. What a fabulous pot that is. Yeah, that, that's a great shot there. And, and he's actually got a pretty good lay here. If he's able to shoot the two and just keep it smooth, he can cut the five and allow the cue ball to just run into the eight. The three ball's there. He should be able to get out here with no issues as long as his lay on the five ball is uh, workable. Oh, yeah. This should work out really well. I mean, how good a pot was that into a completely blind side pocket? Those tough, tough, uh, sharp cuts are something that, what I've noticed, our junior players are, again, we talk about them being fearless. That's a fearless shot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, he came out okay. The eight ball almost locked him up a little bit. He hit it higher than he wanted to, but the three ball definitely goes, and so does the eight ball. He's just got to take his time on the three, make it, and you're golden. He put a little bit of draw on that ball, and it caused it to kill off the rail. And he's, he's in a bit of a spot here now. I don't like the angle off the eight. He's going to send his cue ball flying around the table. It does go into the left corner pocket. I can tell you that. Definitely, definitely goes. I don't think he's going to miss it. I'm worried about the cue ball. Eight balls good. How's the cue ball? Oh. Also pretty good. And those are the finishes that can just hurt your opponent. I did just keep a little eye on 
on the top left corner of the screen when when Sam nudged the eight ball with his with his penultimate shot there. And Chris just pulled a little face. Well, He's a born winner. Not only that, but let's also keep in mind there's there's some cash up for grabs. Oh yeah. And it wasn't free to fly over here. He's a prize fight set. So the, no the mistake about money that. while the title is phenomenal, the money is is uh, icing on the cake. So that's definitely what he's uh, looking for. And he doesn't want to go home empty-handed. He wants the title and the paycheck. And I don't blame him. I do want to challenge you, though. Off the top of your head, we talked about it a little bit. Jordan Shepard, Chris Melling. Ever had a six-red shootout? No. Uh, no. <laughs> because they just play too fast, yeah. right? They're, they're getting nowhere near a six-red shootout. Gotcha. <laughs> they, they, you barely hear the beeps in those matches. <laughs> it's it's, it's I, pretty I, impressive to watch. Yeah. One of the most impressive things I've ever seen happen on a pool table was Jordan Shepard uh, played in his first tournament with Ultimate Pool a few years ago. And he, uh, he, play, he the format was it, was it was groups of four and there were sort of mini, mini brackets within the tournament. So... Chris Manning was in the was in the mini bracket alongside Jordan Shepard. Jordan Shepard played uh, Mick Hill, who Paul fans may be familiar with, legend of the game in English terms, but just legend of the sport in, in general. Six-time world champion, considered by many to be the greatest of all time. He was, uh, I believe, six-one down in that match, and then won seven-six in the space of ten minutes, and wow. drew Chris Melling in the next game in the mini bracket and beat Chris 7-0 in about 12 minutes and it is one of the single most impressive things I've ever seen happen on a pool table to the all-time greats beaten in the space of half an hour by a whirlwind and yeah and make no mistake Chris is capable of doing that as well and he has done it on many occasions well and I don't doubt that one of our now league operators for Ultimate Pool League uh, played in the Louisiana Open Drew Chris Melling. Chris beat him 7-0 in 13 minutes. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of a shout-out. Jamie was so excited he had Chris sign a cue ball with the time. And at that point in time, <laughs> it was the fastest match in Ultimate Pool USA history. And it's the, the first record there. So uh, Jamie was just excited to have been a part of the match, kind of. <laughs> and he'll get a kick out of that. But yeah, Chris is just insanely fast, and so is Jordan. I, I would like to see them in a, in a six ball, just yeah. to see. It'd, it'd be interesting for sure, as Chris goes in front here. 3-2. And I think this match here might have the biggest opportunity for it. Ball goes down, cue ball is good. And a stripe sitting on the top rail for Sam Henderson to drop into the pocket and begin his run. This is a phenomenal break here. Look at this. He's been breaking beautifully. He really has. And everything's opened up. If there's any problem on the table, it's going to be the 12 or the 11. But again, this young man moves in tight spaces pretty well. So Yeah, he does. He, he, he's very... The thing is for me, you know, you've got to remember he's 17 years old. The art of this game is patterns. You only get better at those. That is something that only comes with experience. He, his ceiling is high. Well, it's, it's almost disheartening to know that he's been playing... I've been playing this game twice as long as he's been alive. <laughs> Showing my age a little bit. <laughs> Maybe not twice as long. Pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. You didn't, close. you didn't have to out yourself like that, but i um, got a lot of respect for the fact that you did. That's a nice shot. And to think that he's at this level at 17, give him five years. Let's see where he's at then. Yeah, he's, he's a super talent. The, uh, the frame he won a couple of frames ago got quite the reaction on the uh, in the Facebook comments, I can see. One... One man suggesting, put this young man on the Moscone. He has ice in his veins. Well, and 
I can't imagine <laughs> it won't happen at some point. Oh, I think I think it. If he keeps progressing like he has, it's all, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, we shouldn't put too much pressure on him and all that because he, he is such a young kid. And he, to be honest, you do just want to see him enjoy the enjoy the game for a little bit and enjoy all the experiences. But yeah, no, I, I think keep doing what he's doing and all that sort of thing will will take care of itself. It's always great to be on the big stage and to be in the arenas and have the lights ahead of you. Cue ball dresses up a little roughly. But at the end of the at the end of the day, sometimes even in that arena with those lights, you want to just look up and enjoy the moment, right? That's what it's all about. Well, this will show us how well he knows his kicking systems. With that tin ball being on the rail, it does make it very difficult to get the angle right. Just like that, it's very easy to come in at the wrong angle. So Chris here with a huge opportunity to steal this rack because that's what he'd be doing is stealing. Not for the first time. He had this actually in his last match, did Chris? Against David Matlock. You know, David had a lot of the first chance in that one. And ultimately, if you if you keep on turning the table over to Chris Melling, you, you're going to end up on the losing side. Yeah. These, these are finishes that Chris gets 10 out of 10. Not only 10 out of 10, but the 15-second shot clock, I didn't even notice we were there because it's just not going to come into play very much with him. Quick thinker. Quick actions. He doesn't have to take a lot of time. This is this is really just a clockwork for Chris. Make the ball, get the shape, repeat. Yeah, it was last three balls were stop shots. Sometimes watching Chris Melling. It, it it it's almost like it sends you into a trance with how smooth he can be. It's one of the first things I noticed watching him live. Massive break from Chris. And you see what the cue ball did there. This is the same thing that it did before when it got kicked 19 times in the <laughs> corner. He was able to stall that ball out just like that, and and it worked really well for him. Just hold that cue ball on that on that left side of the table, or right side of the table, excuse me. And he's really set himself up well. The 15 second shot clock really only coming into play for Chris on that opening shot. He's gonna map everything out and uh, simply go for a little drive. Hmm. Came up, came a little short. I mean, a, a little long there. Yeah, he's the wrong side of that nine, so he's gonna there's always a backup plan. Going to take the 14 here. Key ball in this visit is the 15. And I want to land on that. I'd imagine sooner rather than later. He may even leave it for an eight ball. It's very possible. Yeah, I like taking the 15 here, and then the 13, and the nine. It dresses up well from the 13 to the 9, connects very, very well. And uh, Sam has had an immaculate run here. It's not over yet, but this is definitely going to hurt his chances if Chris is able to get out of this rack. Yeah, you feel like it's odds on now. And boy, have we had some upsets today. Shane Thompson in the first round going out. Tyler Steyer in the second round going out. 
Justin Bergman in the second round going out. Uh, Noel, or no, apologies if I'm saying your name wrong, Atal is absolutely driving range, stop messing about. <laughs> <laughs> and the size of the table, we're on seven foot bar boxes, four inch pockets, it's custom valley table for this event. Sam Henderson makes a ball off this break, immediately scuppers to get his playing cue to try and force the issue here. And then he comes back to the table to survey the scene and realizes this is a very, very tricky finish. He actually, in a strange way, doesn't need to rush here. He's got six minutes. The, if Chris Melling wins a frame, he's going to win. Sam's going to need three chances. But two minutes a frame is not bad. Oh, wow. And he, he's been very unlucky there. For him to hit that ball like that and not have a shot is simply just bad luck. That's all it comes down to. He got, he got a, a bad roll, bad kiss, whatever you want to call it. He's going to throw the kitchen sink at this one. But that could well be that. Well, and it, it's very, very likely, not impossible, or not, not guaranteed, but very likely that we are going to see a Chris Melling, Jordan Shepard final. If Chris is able to get out of this rack, he's got some trouble here. Time is on his side. The current score is on his side. Well, if this 14 goes, it makes Chris's life a lot easier. And it can't do because he'd have played on it there. So I just wonder what the plan is. Uh, the, the way this dressed up, I feel like the 15 into the 14 is is or 15 into the 10, excuse me, is going to be the shot here, just kind of as a flyer, maybe. <laughs> oh, great call. I say flyer, but, I mean, is anything really a flyer with Chris? No. <laughs> Chris doesn't shoot flyers. He shoots shots. He's got to have a plan. I'm so intrigued as to what it is. So what I think here is I think he's just going to try and float this into the side pocket if he can, and then just simply bank the 14. Oh, I didn't even see the 10 over there on the sideline. He's going to break it out here. Oh, what a pot. Oh, this, this doesn't make it easy. Now he's got to bank this 14 ball, but the one ball is really putting him in a nasty spot. I don't think he can play the bank the way he wants to. I lied. Wow. Here we go. He's at it again. He's <laughs> at it again. Is there anything he can't make? I'll answer your question after this 12 ball. <laughs> He's a little bit special. You talk about outs. This is one of the best outs I've seen all day, and we've seen a ton of them. Chris Melling, the magician, <laughs> waves his wand once again. A special finish to close out the match. What an incredible out that was from Chris. He is into another Ultimate Pool USA final. He's made three straight. <laughs> what a run he's on.